Hi, welcome to Three Kandaris. So here we are again with an informative session, which is regarding aptitude test in Ireland. So what uh, are we talking about today, uh, Janet? So today our session is going to be with regards to water low assessment. So how to do a water low assessment, how to make the scoring and what does the scoring really mean? So it is. one of the very important uh, station or scenario for the uh, aptitude test. So we will be discussing one of the ways of how to deal with uh, the scenario during the examination. So this is a water low pressure area chart. So I'm going to interview my patient or assess my patient who is newly admitted and fill the chart accordingly. Hi, good morning Ramya. My name is Janet. I'm the nurse who's going to look after you. Uh, we are in the process of the admission procedure, so I would like to ask a few questions and also assess your skin as I need to fill up the water low pressure area chart. Is that okay? Yeah, that's all right. Okay, so Ramya, I need your full name here. Yes. So Ramya R. And your date of birth? 6485. And admission date today is the 7th of the 10th, 22. You are in 2B ward, Ramya. Yeah. And your diagnosis is upper respiratory tract infection. Okay, so now Ramya is a female, so th the score should be 2. Before that, I would like to put the date on top here and that's 7th of the 10th, 22. So my first particular is gender, female, male. So I'm going to put two here. If my patient was a male, then my score would have been one. Next is the age. So I have the date of birth here. So I know the age, but I can confirm with my patient. Uh, so uh, Ms. Ramya, you are 37 years old. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So the score would be one. Next, I need the height, weight, BMI. So average is 20 to 24.9. So usually a normal person wouldn't really know what the BMI is. So we'll have to weigh the patient, take the height and calculate the BMI. But if your station is only with regards to water low uh, pressure area chart, you wouldn't have enough time for uh, checking the weight, height and then calculating the BMI. So the BMI would be given either in the question paper or in the charts with regards with, uh, related to the patient or else the question paper itself will tell you that the BMI of the patient is either average, above average, obese or below average. So I, I am presuming that my patient is a, a below average person. So below 20 is the BMI. So I'll put the score as 3. If my patient's average, if my patient's BMI was average, it would have been score 0. Anything above average would have been 1 and obese would have been 2. So here I'm considering my patient to have a BMI below average. That means below 20. So the score is 3. Next is the skin type. So uh, Mr. Ramya, I just want to know uh, with regards to your skin. So I'm going to visualize and inspect your skin. And also uh, to touch and see if your skin is healthy. Is it a tissue paper kind of skin? Dry or edematous? So uh, I'm going to touch on your palm and see if it is pitting. And if it is pitting, then there would be edema. And can you say by uh, yourself, like, is your skin very dry? Do you usually have to use moisturizers very frequently? And uh, does it uh, happen that your skin produces white scaly powder-like secretions? Uh, do you feel that your skin is very dry or it is tissue paper kind that means it is at high risk of tearing or having wounds and cuts very easily oh well, yeah basically my skin is very dry so i used uh, moisturizer very frequently okay so your skin is not prone to be uh, not prone to wounds or cuts very frequently i mean is it's not like tissue paper kind of skin uh, no okay. it's dry yeah perfect so the dry, the score would be 1. So I'm putting the score 1 here. Next is uh, mobility. So mobility, fully mobile, restless or fidgety, uh, fidgety 
ഫിജിറ്റി ലെതാർജിക് റെസ്ട്രിക്റ്റഡ് ഇനോട്ട് ഓർ ട്രാക്ഷൻ ചെയർ ബൗണ്ട് സോ മൈ പേഷ്യൻറ്റ് ഈസ് ഐ മൈ പേഷ്യൻറ്റ് ഈസ് നോട്ട് അണ്ടർ ട്രാക്ഷൻ നോട്ട് ചെയർ ബ്രൗൺ ബൗണ്ട് ഐ നോ ദാറ്റ് ബട്ട് ഐ ക്യാൻ ആസ്ക് ഇഫ് മൈ പേഷ്യൻറ്റ് ഹാസ് എനി അതർ ഇഷ്യൂസ് സോ മിസ്റ്റർ എംയ ഐ ജസ്റ്റ് വോണ്ട് ടു ആസ്ക് വിത്ത് റിഗാർഡ്സ് ടു യു മൊബിലിറ്റി ഐ യു ഫുള്ളി മൊബൈൽ വെരി ഇൻഡിപെൻഡൻ്റ്ലി ഓർ ഡു യു ഫീൽ റെസ്റ്റ്ലെസ് ആൻഡ് ഫിജിറ്റ് ഫിജിറ്റി വൈൽ യു ആർ ഇൻ എ ചെയർ ഓർ എ ബെഡ് യു ഫീൽ ലൈക്ക് യു വാണ്ട് മൂവ് ഓർ ഐ യു ഫീലിംഗ് വെരി റെസ്ട്രിക്റ്റഡ് ഓർ ലെതാർജിക് ഹൗ ഡു യു ഫീൽ അബൌട്ട് യുവർ മൊബിലിറ്റി ഓ യാ വെൻ ഐ വർക്ക് ഐ ഫീൽ സോ ലെതാർജിക് ഓക്കെ സോ ബിക്കോസ് മൈ പേഷ്യൻ ഇസ് കംപ്ലെയിനിങ് ഓഫ് ലെതാർജി ഡ്യൂറിംഗ് മൊബിലിറ്റി ദ സ്കോർ ഇസ് ടു Next is continence. So, Ms. Ramya, I just want to ask uh, something very private that is about your continence. So, are you completely continent? That means you don't have any leakage of urine. You don't have any dribbling. You are under full control with your urine. Is that so? Or do you have a catheter? No, actually, I have uh, incontinence of urine in between. I have dribbling of urine. Okay, so do you use a pad to hold the urine? Oh, yeah, I use a pad. Okay, so uh, is it occasionally or very frequently? No, it's occasionally. Okay, so my patient has occasional incontinence of urine. But I need to also ask about her bowel pattern. So can I ask you, Ms. Ramya, uh, your bowels, uh, do you have incontinence of bowels by any chance or are you completely continent with your bowels? Yeah, I'm completely continent. Okay, about. so my patient has occasional incontinence of urine. So I put the score 1. so it can be catheterized uh, incontinent of feces or doubly incontinent doubly incontinent means incontinent of urine and feces while you say the word catheterize maybe uh, if the layman may not understand what the word catheterize is so you will have to explain then that is uh, the insertion of tube to drain the urine out so it depends on what kind of the questions the person who access the patient will ask you you have very less time to fill up this form there's more uh, Uh, particles in this to be filled so the patient can hold up you asking different questions so you should be very tactful while filling up this and handling the patient so next my uh, particular is appetite so miss ramya how about your appetite is it average poor or do you take fluids only or do you not take anything or you have very less appetite no my appetite is okay, okay so i would say that you have an average appetite and hence the score is zero So the next uh, is special risk or tissue malnutrition. So how do you assess tissue malnutrition? First is ta- terminal cachexia, cardiac failure, peripheral vascular disease, anemia and smoking. So terminal cachexia means muscle wastage due to any terminal illnesses. So you have to uh, check whether the patient has muscle wastage. So I'm go- I'm going to check if my patient has terminal cachexia. and i am checking if there is any muscle wastage so in order to check that i ask the patient to lift the hand up and if there is any skin and muscle loose sagging here down that means the patient has terminal cachexia or muscle wastage because there isn't any here you can assume that the patient has no terminal cachexia if my patient had terminal cachexia the score would have been 8 next is cardiac failure miss ramya Do you remember that your doctor talking or telling you that you have any heart issues? Did you have any heart attack or any issues with regards to your heart in the past? No. No. Okay. And any uh, blood circulation issues with you know, on on your legs, arms, anywhere? Do you feel numbness, tingling sensation and have your GP ever told that that the blood circulation is not adequate? Oh yeah my GP has told me about that so because I had numbness so I approached GP so GP told me like you know I have some issues okay yeah. can you remember uh, him saying some vascular disease peripheral vascular disease mm, actually oh sorry I don't remember that word but GP said something like that okay so we can presume that the patient has a, a peripheral vascular disease and the score would be 5 my next point is anemia so the layman may not be able to understand from the word anemia so i'm going to ask few questions with regards to anemia miss ramya do you think uh, you feel very tired and pale have you have ever, any of your friends or family told that you look very pale and you feel very tired 
and your GP has told that your bloods are low. Can you think of such a situation in the past? Mm, no, not really. No. And did your GP any time prescribe you any iron supplements? Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember uh, like uh, two months back, my GP prescribed some iron supplements for me. Did he tell you the reason for it? Oh, yeah. That time when I did the blood test, the, you know, the uh, blood was low. The count was low, something like that, he told me. Oh, okay. So that would have been the anemia where iron supplements are given. Oh, is it? Yes. So I think you had anemia and so hence the score would be two. Uh, do you mind if I ask, do you smoke? I was smoking, but now I quit smoking. I was not smoking for two months now. Okay, very good. Congratulations for that. So if the patient had been smoking currently, then I would have said the score is one again. Now, the special risk is neurological deficits. It, that includes diabetes, MS, CVA, where the patient is unconscious, or motosensory paraplegia. So if there is any one of these, the score would be four. And any two of these, the score would be five. And more than two, the score would be six. So that is how you score the special risk of neurological deficits. Uh, Mr. Amir, uh, how, do you think that your blood sugars are high or have you been diagnosed to have di uh, diabetes any time? Did your GP tell that your blood sugars are high? No. Okay. And uh, do you have any neurological disorders that your GP has told you before or you have been diagnosed with? What do you mean by this neurological? That means your nerves are not working properly. Oh, no, no, no. 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 Okay. Uh, have you had any stroke where you had uh, felt unconscious and you had been unconscious for a while or you cannot move your legs or arms or you couldn't talk properly? Anything like that? No. No. So the, my patient doesn't have any special uh, risk or neurological deficits. Next is other special. Now, my next point is special risk of major surgery or trauma. So, the first point is orthopedic surgeries or below waist surgeries or this patient had any spinal. So, I know that my patient has is not in a position now for any surgery. The patient is sitting with me in the ward. So, I do not have to consider this point. But I can ask my patient whether the, my, my patient was on a table or a trolley in the A&E, that is accident and emergency department for more than two hours. So, Ms. Ramya, before you reached through this ward, uh, I understand that you had gone through the A&E department and while you were waiting for the doctors to be seen and then while you were waiting for you to get a bed in the ward, can you uh, remember how long did you wait down? Oh, I was waiting there for four hours to see the doctor. Okay. And I was on a trolley being... there. Okay. Sorry for that. And after being seen by the doctors, how long did you wait to come up to the ward? It was, um, yeah, it took uh, like two hours again. Okay. So yeah. in total, you have been on the trolley for six hours in the A&E. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah, so of course, that is a risk factor because the patient had been on the trolley for more than two hours. Hence, the score is five. My next and the last uh, special risk is medication. So the medications do not mean any medications that the patient take. The patient might be taking paracetamol. The patient might be taking diabetic medications or antihypertensives. Those are not considered while you check into the medication. It should be either high dose steroids, cytotoxics or anti-inflammatories. If the patient is not taking any medications, you can say zero. So first I will ask if the patient is taking any medications. Ms. Ramya, can you think of that you're taking any medications at the moment? Are you on any regular medications? Oh, yeah, I'm taking paracetamol and, you know, like the GP told me to take iron supplements. So okay. only those medications I'm on. Okay. You're not on any cytotoxic drugs. That means uh, any chemotherapeutic drugs. Oh, no, no, no. No. And you're not on any steroids? No. No. Okay. And do you take diphene or neurofen, something like that? Yeah, sometimes when I have severe pain, I used to take okay, and Okay, but you do not take it on a regular basis? No. Okay, that's fine. So my patient is not on any of these medications on a regular basis, hence the score is zero. But if my patient had been taking any one of these, either steroids, cytotoxics or anti-inflammatory, and that means one medical preparation, the score would have been one. If it was any two of these, then the score would have been two. Any three of these score would have been three and so forth. So four and more, 
the score would have been 4. So here my patient is not taking any medication, hence the score is 0. So now I have to add on the score from page 1 and score from the page 2. After adding the scores, I got a total score of 22 and next is signature. So I am putting my name here. Now how do I analyze whether the score is appropriate? So the chart at the end shows 10 plus at risk, 15 plus high risk and 20 plus very high risk. As my patient has scored 22, so my patient falls at a very high risk category according to the Waterloo chart. So this is the analysis of the Waterloo score. So if, you, if your patient falls in any of the risk factors, either be low risk, high risk or very high risk, the patient should be getting few preventive measures in order to prevent the development of pressure sore. So the preventive aids are special mattresses and beds and general nursing care. So firstly, special, if the patient scores 10 plus, then the patient should be on an overlay or specialist form mattress. So there are a few examples given. And if it is 15 plus, then it is anatomic support mattress or low air or alternative pressure mattress. If it's 20 plus, then it is low air loss and alternative pressure mattress. So according to the patient's score, the type of mattress or the bed differs. Next is cushion. So no patient should sit in a wheelchair without some form of cushioning. So even if they have not been assessed and if they have not received a cushion, at least a pillow should be given. So if it, the score is 10 plus 4 inch form cushion, 15 plus specialist gel or form cushion, 20 plus is cushion capable of adjustment to suit the individual patient. Then comes bed clothing. So plastic draw sheets have to be avoided. Inco pads and tightly tucked in sheets, sheet covers, especially when using specialist bed and mattresses. So the reason for it is that there should not be any wrinkles on the sheet so that it affects the patient's skin and can cause damage. So these are the preventive measures that has to be taken according to the scores or the water loss scores the patient achieves. Nextly is the nursing care or general care which has to be provided to all the patients irrespective of their scores. So the general care includes regular positioning and use of clinical judgment according to the score and the patient's condition, use of pillows appropriately and pain management, high protein with vitamins and minerals containing nutrition, then correct patient handling, lifting techniques, use of other lifting equipments like hoist, monkey pole, transfer devices and bed cradles, usage of bed cradles, sheep skins and then 4 inch cover plus adequate protection. Uh, it is all according to the patient's condition you use which kind of method has to be provided. So this is the bed clothing should have enough protection that is what this means 4 inch of cover plus adequate protection. And then skin care, regular hygiene that is general hygiene, no rubbing, correct lifting and positioning and cover with appropriate dressing. So what we have discussed now is assessment of skin uh, with pressures water low assessment chart and seeing the score and how to decide what kind of care to be provided according to the score. So the first and foremost thing that we have to do is remove the pressure. So wherever is the pressure that has to be removed. Just in case if there is any discoloration of the skin or you think that there is a pressure sore then you can classify the pressure sore according to the color of the skin and the uh, depth of the wound as stage 1 two, three, and four. So what we have discussed now is uh, assessment of skin with the use of water law assessment chart. And here in which we had been interviewing a patient and finding out the details plus using the details from the question paper or the scenario sheet as well as the patient's chart. So while you do this, the patient or the examiner who is acting as the patient might interfere your assessment and keep asking questions in which you might lose your time. So you should be very smart and tactful enough in order to handle the patient as well as fill the form in, in the provided time. So they might ask you questions like what is cachexia? While you have been dealing through the first part of the questions, they might look into the second part of the questions 
and they might ask you what is catheterization, what is incontinence and so on. So you have to tell very respectfully to the patient that I shall explain to you, well, let's go in an order. So you can, so that you can save the time as well as finish your examination point, what you have supposed to be doing. Hopefully this in video has been very informative and helpful to the students who are preparing for aptitude examination. We will be coming with more informative sessions and more scenarios in regards with aptitude examination. So please stay tuned with three Kandaris. Yeah.